Farming already present in parts of northern Gaza, says the U.S., adding that other areas are in danger of falling into conditions of starvation. This comes a day after the world's top court ordered Israel to allow food into Gaza. Cleanup exercise underway in Baltimore, the largest crane on the eastern U.S. seaboard is at the location where the Francis Scott Key Bridge dramatically collapsed on Tuesday. Search for the bodies of four workers is on hold because of the dangers of diving amid the wreckage. Christian faithful around the world observe Good Friday with solemn processions and prayer. Pope Francis leads prayers at the Vatican but skips the Colosseum ceremony due to poor health. He will be leading Easter prayers on Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday. An Indian Navy vessel responded to yet another pirate attack. The vessel intercepted an Iranian fishing boat in the Arabian Sea after diverting two warships for the maritime security mission. After hours of intense anti-pirate tactical measures, all in keeping with standard operating procedures, crew members on board FV Al-Kambar of 23 Pakistani nationals have been safely rescued. The Iran-flagged fishing vessel was reportedly attacked by at least nine armed pirates around 90 nautical miles southwest of Socotra. The Socotra archipelago is in the northwest Indian Ocean near the Gulf of Aden. In recent months, the Indian Navy has increased its vigilance due to increased attacks on merchant ships near the Gulf of Aden. The Indian Navy has carried out several operations to thwart piracy in the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean region. Earlier this month, the Indian Navy intercepted the pirate besieged MV Rouen and freed it from the clasp of Sobanian pirates by forcing them to surrender. The INS Kolkata safely evacuated the 17 crew members from the merchant vessel which pirates were using as a mothership. All 35 pirates surrendered. Earlier, the Indian Navy also responded to a distress call from the Gulf of Aden, where a merchant vessel was set ablaze after being hit by a missile. The Navy rescued the 21 crew members, which also contained one Indian national. Now, a report says the U.S. has authorized the transfer of billions of dollars worth of bombs and fighter jets to Israel. And this comes even as Washington publicly expresses concerns about an anticipated Israeli military offensive in Rafah. The report says that the new arms package includes more than 1,800 MK-84, 2,000 LB bombs and 500 MK-82, 500 LB bombs. The package comes as Israel faces strong international criticism of its continued bombing campaign and ground offensive in Gaza. Some members of President Joe Biden's party have also called on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to cut dependence on U.S. military aid. Biden has, however, vowed continued support for Israel despite an increasingly public rift with the Prime Minister. Washington gives $3.8 billion in annual military assistance to Israel, its long-term ally. The White House declined to comment on the weapons transfers. The weapon delivery to Israel follows a visit to Washington by the Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant this week. On his visit, Gallant discussed Israel's weapons needs with U.S. counterparts. With the presidential candidates for the Democrats and Republicans decided, all eyes are now on who will be the vice presidential pick. Republicans and independent voters appear open for anyone to become Donald Trump's number two except for one candidate, and that is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. In a new Economist YouGov survey, registered voters approved nine of ten possible picks with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis topping the list, with 68% approving of him as Trump's running mate. 
He was followed by former Trump era housing chief Ben Carson at 60%. Then we have businessman Vivek Ramaswamy, who was running for the Republican nomination alongside Trump. And Senator Tim Scott was approved by 53% of the Republicans. Then we have six more candidates who were approved to become Donald Trump's number two. In the poll, all of these candidates' approval numbers topped their disapprovals by at least 14 points. For Nikki Haley, 36% approved of Trump picking her, while a whopping 51% of registered Republicans and independents disapproved of putting her on the ticket. Despite Nikki Haley fitting the bill for those wishing Trump would pick an established conservative minority woman, her attacks on the former president during her long short presidential campaign is believed to have soared voters against her. A group of immigrant workers gathered at the Baltimore offices of CASA, a Maryland-based immigration advocacy group, where they mourned the lives lost in the bridge collapse. This comes as a crane that can lift a thousand tons, described as one of the largest on the eastern seaboard, arrived near the site of a collapsed highway bridge as crews prepared to begin clearing wreckage that is hindering the search of four workers missing and presumed dead. And I've been informed by the U.S. Navy that they are supplying us with four heavy lift cranes. Two have already arrived. One arrives tonight and the fourth is arriving on Monday. One of the cranes is called the Chesapeake 1000 and it can lift about 1000 tons. But the big part and one of the challenges is that the key bridge, which sits on top of the vessel right now, that that weight is somewhere between three and 4,000 tons. So our team needs to cut that truss into sections in a safe, in a responsible and in an efficient way before it can lift those pieces out of the water. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says that forensic operations technicians assisted in analyzing data that was acquired from the Corps of Engineers survey boat, the Cutlet, in the Baltimore Harbor. The Corps says that crew members used sonar equipment to determine the location of debris and search for submerged vehicles from the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. At this time, there is no indication of active releases from the vessel, nor of the presence of materials that are hazardous to human health in the water. However, monitoring is ongoing, and we will work through the Unified Command to report and review and be transparent of any results from this monitoring as they become available. According to Moore, Equipment on hand will include seven floating cranes, ten tugboats, nine barges, eight salvage vessels, and five Coast Guard boats. Within hours of Moore's request for emergency funds, the U.S. government had awarded Maryland $60 million to clear debris and begin rebuilding the bridge. Meanwhile, new Dashcam camera footage was released, which captured moments before a cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. The images showed how the vehicles were stopped from passing over the bridge just minutes before the accident. Baltimore's thrumming port has long been an economic engine that provides thousands of jobs for Maryland residents, even as other local businesses have shattered and industrial production has declined. Russia has intensified its attack on Ukraine. Ukrainian officials say that Ukraine's air force downed two Russian missiles in the southern port of Odessa. The debris hit civilian infrastructure and injured five people. The latest barrage targeting the country's already damaged power infrastructure, massive Russian missile and drone attacks hit thermal and hydropower plants in central and western Ukraine overnight. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says that the Kaniv hydropower plant and Dinista plant, which is located on the Dinista River, flowing through neighboring Moldova, were among the targets. According to Ukrainian Energy Minister, power facilities in the regions of 
Dnipro, Petrovsk, Poltava, and Cherasky were attacked by Russia. The largest private power firm, DTEC, also said three of its thermal power plants had come under Russian attack. According to the Ukrainian military, its air force managed to destroy 58 Russia-launched attack drones overnight from a total of 60 along with 26 of 39 missiles. Russia attacked critical infrastructure in Ukraine last week. Russian missiles pounded Ukraine's largest dam the, in the southern Zaporizhia region. The massive overnight attack was carried out eight times by Russia. The spree of Russian airstrikes has yet again made Ukraine vulnerable. Kyiv is asking its allies from the west to supply them with more air defense systems to secure critical infrastructure and protect the population. Meanwhile, Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk has warned that Europe is in a pre-war era and Ukraine must not be defeated by Russia for the good of the whole continent. He said war was no longer a concept from the past, adding that it's real and it started over two years ago. Tusk used his first interview with European media since returning to office of Polish Prime Minister at the end of 2023 to urge leaders around the continent to bolster their defenses. It's been a week since the terror attack rocked Moscow when gunmen killed 144 men, women and children and wounded dozens at the Crocker City Hall in the outskirts of the Russian capital. Residents of Moscow and neighboring areas continue to pay condolences through flowers and toys at the memorial outside the concert venue. Russia has not seen a terror attack like it in the last two decades. Dozens of mourners continue to gather outside the theater daily to pay condolences and expressing their pain and anger. It feels very hard, everything that is going on. It's hard to comprehend that there is evil in this world. This is terrible. Now we all need to deal with the pain of loss. This is a tragic event and everyone's life has changed. Everyone starts to appreciate the lives of their loved ones and relatives and all who are close to them. Gunmen stormed the Crocker City Hall on the evening of the 22nd of March and sprayed concert goers with bullets during a performance by the Soviet-era rock group called Picnic. It's the bloodiest attack that has taken place in Russia since the 2004 Beslan school siege. Later, the terror group Islamic State claimed responsibility for the deadly attack. The U.S. also said that it had warned the Russian establishment of intelligence about the attack earlier this month. Significantly, Russian President Vladimir Putin has not publicly mentioned the terror outfit in connection with the attackers, who he said had been trying to escape to Ukraine. He has squarely blamed Ukrainian nationalists for the terror attack. On March 25th, four terror suspects belonging to Tajikistan were produced in court, out of which three pleaded guilty. The court ruled that the men should be held in pre-trial custody until the 22nd of May. In other news at this hour, Ukraine has received 1.5 billion US dollars in funding from the World Bank. This infusion of capital is aimed at supporting Ukraine's budget and vital social spending amidst the crises. The financing, provided by Britain and Japan, comes at a crucial time as Ukraine faces dwindling foreign aid and mounting financial pressures. The latest tranche from the World Bank adds to Ukraine's much success in securing approximately 9 billion US dollars in total external financing. Contributions from key allies, including the European Union, Canada, Japan and others, have played a pivotal role in bolstering Ukraine's resi resilience. Notably, earlier in March, Ukraine received a 4.9 billion US dollar aid package from the European Union, despite the challenges posed by blocked aid packages, including a stalled U.S. assistance program, Ukraine continues to forge ahead in its fight against the Russian invasion. 
with most of its own revenues directed towards defense. Ukraine relies heavily on international support to cover essential social expenditures. Since the onset of the conflict in February 2022, Ukraine has received 83.8 billion U.S. dollars in international assistance.